It's good morning, Stitch Together friends. I am so excited. I have done it. I have spun through. Oh dear, if I can find. I, I had them. <sighs> These are not the Seussville Paradise Fibers cards. Where did I put them? Oh gosh. Here they are. I did it. I spun all 10 ounces of the Seussville fibers. Oh, the spins, I will spin. I am so excited to tell you what I ended up coming up with. I did not expect, um, I did not expect some of what I ended up getting. So it's pretty exciting. And today we're gonna finish up the last two hangs of fiber. So, you probably remember this one, which I spun from the fold in one of my Hanu Christmas Vlogmas videos. And that was my first time spinning from the fold. This one, attempt number two, I stripped it lengthwise by color, and that was also in one of my earlier videos. And you can see that the colors are a little more consistent and stripy. And then for the third try, I really went in on the striping. <clears throat> I stripped it pretty uniformly. And I talked a bit about this in my New Year's video. Um, I really tried to keep the colors consistent and I separated them into piles. And when it was all done, I had about one bobbin full and I chain plied them, that bobbin. I chain plied that bobbin and I've ended up with like really long lengths of consistent color, which I'm really excited about. Okay. When I had finished um, spinning up those three, I had some fiber left, about three ounces to be precise. And I knew I wanted to make it into something that was a bit of an art yarn. Why can't I keep track of these cards? I've literally... Okay, found them again. And, you know, so this um, was the Paradise Fibers March 2022 fiber club bag and like I said before in my other video when I received this I was like what am I going to do with this this is completely outside my comfort zone it's bright it's neon I do not normally do neon um I had no idea what I was going to do with top that looked like this but at uh, Early in December, my daughters were performing in a production of the musical, of Susical, the musical, and um, one of my daughters actually really likes the bright colors represented by this fiber. So she said, Mom, Mom, I really want you to spin me up this fiber. So I said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll bite the bullet. I'll spin this fiber that I have no idea what to do with. Um, so, you know, the, the first thing I did was spin it from the fold because that was what was suggested here in this picture on the card that came in the fiber club bag. Um, you can see, well, actually, so this is, this is spun from the fold and felted like a single, which explains why it has none of the marling that mine has. I mean, mine looks nothing like what is in this lower picture here. I'm really not pointing with my middle finger. I promise you I'm pointing with two of them. Um, but it's still a very cool yarn. I thought, you know, this is still kind of modeled. Like I want my daughter's hat to have a bit more color definition, although she thought this was pretty cool. So, so after trying spinning from the fold and plying that together, I had seen someone separate out the colors. So I decided, okay, method two. 
I will strip the colors lengthwise and try to keep them more consistent. And I think, you know, I was really pleased with this one and I thought that would be a cool one to knit into a hat for my daughter. But I wanted to try something else. So method three, I knew you could. I'd seen someone strip the fibers lengthwise and really get these long stripes of color. And so, you know, I, I decided to do that and it really worked out well with the chain plying. Um, you know, I don't know that initially, oh wow, I never even saw, I, I totally ignored the entrelac on the back. That is so cool. Uh, that would, if I end up with a bunch of extra, I could, I could do some entrelac. I haven't done that in years. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, I really never would have thought that I could take something with this much multicolor to it and come up with something that was this consistent. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I mean, just look at that bright color. It's just really vibrant. I also knew though that because of this picture on top and on the back here, I knew I wanted to try doing some kind of art darn. I hadn't done any, um, you know, thread plying or anything like that in a really long time. And I kind of missed it because I knew it could make some really unique and interesting yarns. So I knew for the last set of fiber, and I had about three ounces left, that I wanted to do some thread plying and some thick and thin and try to make some art yarn. But I didn't quite trust myself to apply two of the strands together as they've done in the example on this sheet. So, so I decided I divided the three ounces and half into two chunks of one and a half, sorry, 1.5 ounces each. And the first one, um, and I'm going to put up the video in a minute. I have not, I've not treated this yet. I, we're going to go to my iron because that's the only kind of steamer that I have and see if we can relax some of the twist on this one. Uh, this one I was just spinning randomly and taking the colors as they come. And I actually, like, I got, when I put the video in, you'll see this. Um, I got halfway through and I started realizing, oh my gosh, I'm like, this is how they make those cool, like coils and beehives. And not just like really cool twisties like this, but you know, you can spin the yarn back on itself and you can get some really stunning effects. Like, like, look at that. Oh my gosh. So, so I was just spinning along and all of a sudden I started doing this cool stuff with the yarn. And I actually really like that it's not as bright as this one. Um, it just got caught on my microphone. I like that this one is a little bit more um, muted and you, you can see that it's just like really coiled up right now because the threads, the thread that it's plied with is just, I don't know, really vigorous, but look at those coils. Oh my gosh. I, I've never, I've literally never done this before. I didn't watch a video about how to do it. I was just watching it, the single twist around the thread and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can just smush this along and make cool stuff and that I couldn't stop myself. It was so fun. Let me show you. So, so let me tell you about the other 
1.5 ounces and then we'll go over to the steamer um yeah so oh sorry i was gonna say i kind of like that this is a little bit more muted i have you know from from last year's paradise fibers also like i've got this this tweedy pinkish yarn that i think actually is going to weave up like super cool with this like i actually am really excited to see how these two go together for weaving um i've got this similar one also from last year's fiber club from february that's that's purple that also might work really well um so i'm really excited about how the colors got more modeled in that one but of course i was eager to see if i could separate them out and get another cool art yarn look going and of course by the time i got to this one i'd also started doing the crazy beehives and coils and thick and thin um and i stripped the yarn and i got this whoa uh, oh my gosh it is like it's insane i have literally never made a yarn that looks like this before in my life and i hardly know what to think of it it is completely different than anything i've ever spun it's exceedingly twisty that's why i need to take it over to the iron um but it's got like it's got cool little coils and little bumpy beehive sec i mean look at that that is just so cool i love it or um or this one down here look at that little blue thing it is just so so i'm gonna say cute my kids would laugh at me or this big one look at that big thing boing it's actually kind of fun to make it boing um but i think this will also make maybe either a cool detail on my daughter's hat or um it'll also work out really well with weaving like i'll probably weave this with just a white warp and use this for the weft i'm not sure yet that'll be i don't know of oh, the spins you will spin part four i guess this is part three Okay, let me go get my iron and we'll see what we can do with these two very springy yarns and see if we can uh, get them to relax at all. I'll be right back. Okay, so my ancient iron is heating up. My messy ironing board is ready here. And I don't know about you, but I've basically designed my wardrobe so that I don't have to iron. It is not my favorite thing at all. Um, my husband's clothes don't get ironed. We don't like ironing. Pretty much the only time I use an iron is if I'm doing fiber crafts, um, like ironing for sewing or steam blocking something. So I'm gonna try to steam block this yarn. We'll start with, we'll start with this one because it's the one I made first. And for this one, I used some thread and it's actually polyester thread, which I'm a little bit worried about. I don't know if the polyester thread is going to melt in the steam. I hope not. We'll find out. Okay, the iron is feeling good and hot. So we're just going to aim this down here. Okay. So now you can see things. And I have the steam setting turned on to max. Can you see it relaxing? Like literally? Literally this is relaxing as I do it. It makes me want to go take a sauna. Because literally this yarn is moving and wiggling as I put the iron on it. This is the coolest thing ever. So cool.
think we're pretty much out of water. So I'm gonna turn this off. Put it down. Can you see how much how much less kink there is in this yarn and just how much more is hanging out? That is just that's just from doing the steaming. And you can still see, oh my gosh. <sighs> All those cool little beehives and bits and bots and thicks and thins that, oh my god, this yarn is so exciting. I'm, <laughs> like, I literally had no idea that I could do this before I sat down to spin yesterday. So, actually, you know, I I'm pretty happy with this. It's, it's gotten a lot of its kinks out. It's still got a little twist going down here. So, I think maybe after I refill my iron... I might do a little bit more, but it is feeling like an almost like a nicely balanced yarn now. It's that's really cool. I that's I I just love it. I keep learning new things. I learned how to make fascinating things on art yarn and how to steam set it all in the space of 24 hours. It is such a fun journey. Oh my goodness. And I'm so glad to be sharing it with you guys. Okay, I'll be right back with a full iron. Okay, I'm back and um, yeah, just for comparison, this is the one that has not been steam set, and this is the one that has. It, it's amazing. This is amazing. It is so cool. I knew I couldn't, um, finish this yarn in water because I was afraid that the water was just gonna take all these cool little nuggets and make them disappear, which would be so sad. So... Um, so that's why I decided to steam finish this yarn. And I am going to do a little bit more on this, this one. I have my iron set to the wool setting and of course all that steam. And here we go. There are still some kinks in it, but, um, but you know what? That's okay. It's like, it's an art yarn. It's not supposed to be total perfection. I'm going to hang it up behind the camera here. And you, you may be wondering if I plan to, um, if I plan to weight the yarn, but I'm not going to weight the yarn because I, um, I don't want to make it too stretchy. I like it the way it is. It's cool. Okay. Now, now let's see what we can do. What we can do with this one? Oh my gosh! So you see, I mean, it is literally fitting within one screen here. Hi, Tina. Oh, you guys haven't seen the Tina, Tina in a while, have you? Here's the Tina. No, you may not come up there. Okay, here goes. <gasps> Watch it go. I really hope you can see this. This is just so cool. I'll move the camera down even further and closer. Ooh, I got steam on my face. It's like a steam bath. All right, so we've done kind of the whole top of it. It's still, it's still very springy, but I think, you know what? It's stretching past the ends of the eye, of the screen now. So that's, that's a change. This one might just be like springier yarn. A lot of this, when I peeled out the sections, it just ended up in a thinner yarn to ply with the thread, so. It go. It's just, it's just moving. It's like the yarn is alive. Eh, 
I don't know if this one's going to unkink much. It's although it's now it's definitely stretching beyond the confines of my screen. So I'm going to keep going. You know, I mean, it's you know, here's the end. It's probably a couple inches past on either side. And the yarn is still moving as I do this. Which tells me that there's still twist in there. It needs to kind of set and relax. Okay, watch it move. It's alive! Oh, you're off the end. You can't see it moving. Hopefully you can see it's it's not as unkinky maybe as the other one, but it's um very different than it was a few minutes ago. And I'm gonna have another go with the iron just to see if any more. But it's like hanging, it's hanging really nicely. So I think this one's pretty much done too. So let's lay it back down and see what we can do here. Hey. Ah! Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I have to show this to you again because I simply cannot get enough of how how surprised I am by this yarn. It's still continuing to move, which tells me that it's okay to keep going with this. Of course, the motion, I suppose, could just be like the yarn getting hit with steam. But no, it's actually, I mean, you really can see it relaxing and moving. One thing I hadn't done quite yet was, you know, open this tank up a bit so that the steam could get inside it. So that is something I'm doing now. It's definitely moving around. Oh, we're getting low on water. Nope, we're pretty much out of water here, folks. So these are my Seussville yarns. And I am already working on the hat for my daughter. These other three, the one with the long stripes and the, dirt, the two that are more of the art yarn, I'm gonna put <clears throat> in a bag so that they can stay together with their label. And the little card where I've written a bit about how much length I have. And then the other, um, the other two, the one that I spun from the fold and the one that I spun where I had stripped color lengthwise, I have going in this cool hat for my daughter, my daughter, this hat in progress. Um, it's the Langfield pattern. I'll put that link in the bottom. This side, you start with making a big triangle that, until it wraps around the circumference of your head or the wearer's head. And you can see that the one where I had stripped for color, the second one, I believe, uh, is definitely, you know, retaining some of that color definition. And then the part where I've been working on it more recently, over here, um, the yarn that had less definition of, you know, sort of single dominant colors is showing up that way, but I think they still blend really well together. Um, so I should have this hat done soon. It'll be warm and cozy for my daughter, who is nine, but who apparently can wear an adult-sized hat. And 
I will link the pattern below. One of the things I like about it is not only do you not need to know your gauge, but you don't even really need to know, um, you know, you don't need to know the wraps per inch or the type and width of yarn. You can, uh, because you make this triangle that goes around the head and that makes it a really user-friendly pattern for working with hand spun. So anyway, that is my Seuss yarn and it's been great sharing it with you all. It took a long time to put all these videos together, but I'm glad they're finally done. And we'll see when I can get another video out to share with you. If you want to be a part of that, please subscribe or like this video. And I look forward to having you with me on this fiber arts journey. Thank you.